In the module on binomials, we saw how to multiply two expressions together and come up with an answer like this. Here's a question. When you have an equation with that equal sign in the middle, you can read it in either direction. Both sides say the same thing. Is it possible, then, that if we were given an expression that looked like this, we could take it apart and sort of unmultiply it until we had the two expressions we were given to multiply in the first place? The answer is yes. And not only is it possible, we're going to learn to do it in this module. Multiplying puts expressions together, and unmultiplying, which we call factoring, takes them apart. Factoring is the opposite of multiplying. If you're not sure about this kind of multiplication, take a look at the module on multiplying binomials before you try factoring. It not only helps as you try to understand factoring, but you will use your multiplying skills when you solve factoring problems. Let's say I already know how to factor. I solve this problem and I get this answer. How can I check my answer? How do I know it's right? Simple. I just turn around and multiply it out using our FOIL recipe. And I see if I can get my original expression back again. OK, we have a test, but how do we get an answer? It all depends on the distributive law. So let's start there. Remember this kind of multiplication? If we look at it in the opposite direction, we have a factoring problem, and a pretty simple one as well. All we have to do is look for what the two terms have in common, what appears in both of them. Here, it's x squared and y cubed. So x squared y cubed is what we call the common factor. We remove the common factor, then we see what's left. Here, it is 2x from the first term, the plus sign in between, and the 3y from the second term. We put what remains inside parentheses, or brackets, and we put the common factor, x squared y cubed, on the outside. That's just a way of saying the common factor applies to both terms inside the brackets. That's the distributive law. Since there is no other common factor, we have our answer, and we test it by multiplying and getting our original statement back again. Time for another problem. Not exactly the same, but almost. Here we have a common factor in the numbers, 3 the largest number that divides into 6 and 15. So that's the largest number we can take out as a factor, so out it comes. Then we start on the letters. In each case, we take out the largest factor, which both terms have in common, the highest common factor. What's the next step? Leftovers. We have removed 3, and a to the fourth power, and b cubed, and c. So what's left? In the first term, 2b to the fourth power. In the second term, 5ac. Put those terms in brackets, and we have the answer. How do we know it's right? First, because there are no common factors left inside the parentheses. And second, we test by multiplying. And the result is our original expression. It's time to try one on your own. It has three terms instead of two, but don't let that scare you. Use the same process we applied to the earlier examples. Find the common factors among all three terms. Pause the program while you work out your answer. Click play again, and we will compare our solutions. Here's what I did. Start with the numbers. I look for the highest common factor of 18, 24, and 36. And that's 6. Next, I factor the letters. x squared and y to the fifth power are the largest common factors I can find. I can't find anything else in common, so 6x squared y to the fifth power is the common factor. 
So I take what's left in each of the three terms put it in brackets, put my common factor on the outside, and that's my answer. I multiply it out to check the answer. And it works. So now we know how to do factoring. But how does that help us? These problems don't look a bit like the binomials we multiplied together at the start of this module, the ones I promised we would be able to take apart again. When we multiplied the two binomials together, we got this expression with three terms. We call this a trinomial. How are we going to take this expression apart? The problem is a problem, because there isn't any common factor here. What's common to all three terms? Nothing. No common factors, so we better try something else to get an idea. Let's do this. Let's look again at multiplying binomials using FOIL, and then think about the pattern that shows up in the answer, and then use that pattern to find our original binomials again. First, compare the middle section of our answer with the final term. Look at that middle section. Notice that it can be factored to read a plus b times x. Now notice this. When we factor out the x, we see that a and b are added together in the middle term, right? You see it? a plus b. In the last term of our answer, a and b are multiplied together. There it is, a b, a times b. And what are a and b? They're the final terms in each of our two original binomial expressions. Would this work in a different problem? Would the pattern still be the same? Here, p and q are the final terms in the two expressions to be multiplied. And again, in our answer, we factor out z to reveal p plus q in the middle term, and p times q at the end. Now, here's the crucial question. If the problem included numbers, would we find the same pattern? Is the pattern the same? FOIL gives us x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. What about the middle section? Can we factor it the way we did a plus b and p plus q? We sure can, and we get 3 plus 2 times x. We could combine that into 5x, but we won't. For now, we want to recognize the pattern. And the same pattern is there, 3 plus 2 in the middle term, and 3 times 2 in the final term. We can simplify the final answer to x squared plus 5x plus 6. Question, can we work backwards from our answer to the two original binomials? Yes, we can. How? By finding out the right two numbers that add up to 5 but multiply out to 6. We already know what the numbers are in this case, 3 and 2. And from our pattern, we know where to put them, too. Notice two things. First, in our answer, it doesn't matter which number goes in which brackets. That's the commutative law in action. Second, both expressions start with x, because that's what gives us our x squared. But that problem was easy because we already knew the numbers we wanted. So let's do one where we don't know the answer. We do know the answer is going to be x plus something times x plus something, but what are those two somethings? We need to find two numbers which add up to 7 and multiply out to 12. You may have guessed the answer already, but let me show you what to do if the answer isn't so clear. The two numbers must be factors of 12. So if you list all the factors of 12, you know that one of those pairs is the answer. Which one? We can eliminate the last three pairs because they just duplicate the first three. Of the remaining three, it has to be the pair that adds up to 7. And only one pair does that. So we put 3 in one set of brackets and 4 in the other. It doesn't matter which is which, and we have our answer. How can we be sure? Test by multiplying it out again using FOIL.
And that should take us right back to where we started. Try this one on your own. Remember what your two numbers have to do. Add up to the middle term, multiply out to the last term. Pause the program while you work out your answer. Click play again when you're ready to compare solutions.